Hi, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about Samantha Rich's Screens, a short story um, from the collection Accessing the Future. Um, and in this video, again, I'm going to run through a passage from the story. I'm going to give a quick summary of the story. We'll look at some kind of notes on the story, and then we're going to end with kind of a big question to talk about. So, uh, the passage to start off with. Um, and this is pulled directly from the story, and I'm just going to read through it. I made myself drag up the video of Sonia Teati's speech before Congress again, the peak moment of visibility, just three days before the legislation was passed. Teati was held in a moment of time, forever before the podium balanced against her mobility frame as she spoke. Her hands had a constant tremor that broke through the neurological controllers of the day. The screen set up on the podium before her showed the impulses of epileptic seizures firing in her brain and being diffused by the controllers. Her voice was clear. We will make the invisible disabilities visible. You will not be able to pretend we don't exist. We will be here, we have always been here, but you will see us, each and every one of us. All of these lifetimes you've been telling us to speak up, to make ourselves heard if we want to be counted. We'll know more. We will be seen, we will be known. The burden will be on you to believe your own eyes, not on us. Now, this passage comes from uh, roughly in the middle to kind of the later second half of the story um, and actually takes place before the story begins. This is um, kind of the, the not defining moment, but this is one of the defining moments that leads to this kind of future world that the story takes place in. And so let's actually hop into the summary and kind of see what the story itself is about, right? Uh, well, Samantha Rich's screens paints a future world where screens worn around the chest have made it possible to see another person's neurology, their emotions, their pain, and their disability. These screens are the result of the visibility mo movement, a civil rights struggle to make invisible disabilities visible. Our story follows Helen, a student, as she grapples with the consequences of this technology years after it was implemented. Initially, Helen, like the majority of her classmates, finds the screens to be helpful. There's no question when someone else is frustrated, sad, or happy. It seems pretty nice, right? The colorful screens help her be mindful of a classmate's ADHD or to see how the medication helps a classmate with her anxiety. However, uh, her experience with Stella Marshall, an old friend, causes her to begin questioning the screens. Stella was popular and outgoing throughout middle school, but by their teenagers, Stella's changed. They've drifted apart. Um, and you know, now she goes unnoticed. She's shy. She has a screen that um, lights up with colors of dark blues, grays, browns. You know, Stella is visibly depressed and unmedicated um, to the other students because of that screen worn around her chest. They can all see that. And one day in class, students are picking up their graded papers from the front of the room. And students sit, you know, watching the screens of students picking up their papers. Um, colors glimmer suggesting who's happy with the grade and who isn't, and Stella's screen shows the rare quick glimmer of joy, and Becca, another student, bullies Stella, accusing her of getting a high score and ruining the grading curve. And upset by this, Stella pulls her screen off her body, right, and this is like wired into her, um, painfully ripping wires out, leaving small spots of blood. Um, it's kind of a horrifying scene for this sci-fi story. And mortified by this, Helen, our protagonist, talks to her father later that evening about the screens. He shares with her the story of her grandmother. In her final years, grandmother's final years, the pain from her multiple sclerosis was on display to every passerby, he says. She found that as soon as people saw the pain, they treated her like she was only the pain, ignoring everything beyond her disability. Her father states that the screens were a victory for people with disabilities, but a complicated one. The next day, Stella's back at school, no screen to be found, only scars on her chest where the wires were. Helen attempts to ask Stella, ask, ask how Stella has been, yet the awkwardness of the conversation causes Helen's screen to light up a bright, uncomfortable green that all the other students notice, right? Again, these screens just show their emotions as well. Uh, Stella notices this as well and tells Helen to go away. Um, and in the final moments of the story, Helen hides her screen to Becca, the bully that we talked about earlier, when talking to her. And we, the audience, are left to infer the emotions of Helen and the future of this technology. So, what are my notes on the story? Well, stated in the introduction to Accessing the Future, the anthology where the story comes from, we're told, quote, disability, like all assumptions of what is and is not normal, is defined by society's expectations. It's not a person's ability or impairment, but the willingness of our culture to include and accommodate all people that draws the line between disadvantage and accessibility. In other words, disability is located not at the site of the individual, but at the site of culture and society. When we imagine an accessible future, the question is not how should any one disabled person change to fit that future, but how can society adapt to that person and all people? Unquote. 
So the technology in the story allows people to see the disability of others, yet it's unclear if the technology has helped society to adapt and grow, right? It's a victory, but a complicated one, as her father implies. And so a big question in the story, one of the big things I want you to be thinking about um, is visibility. By making these invisible disabilities visible, so ADHD, anxiety, depression, and other things, is society better able to include and accommodate all people? What do you think? You know, as always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. Um, thanks for watching. And as always, you know, if you like the story, um, go out, find it, use this video in any format that you like. Um, feel free to answer the big question in classroom discussions or in writing or whatever works best for you. Thanks for watching along, and I hope you enjoyed the story as well. Thanks.